So we have been camping out uh, in the passage of John 15, 1 through 17. This is the, the passage where Jesus is talking about the vine and the branches. And I just want to speed through, kind of give you guys a, a recap. You know, like when we watch our favorite TV shows, they're like previously on. So previously at Trinity Church, <clears throat> Jesus starts out by telling everybody, hey, these are the players in this, in this story, okay? God is the gardener. Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches, okay? Then he says, gives us a very specific mandate. Abide. Remain in me, okay? Remain in me so that we can bear fruit. So that we can bear fruit. Now, fruit, as Joel kind of unpacked for us a couple of weeks ago, uh, glorifies the Father, but it glorifies the Father because fruit is loving one another. Abiding, abiding is keeping to God's commandments. So our job is to abide, keep God's commandments, and the fruit that comes from that is loving one another. Got it? Okay. So he then talks about the gardener. And it might seem kind of weird to talk about God as a gardener, but God is the gardener. He's talking about this because we are the branches, and this is matter, this matters to us. It's a matter-of-fact statement, okay? This is not a threatening statement. Don't take it as that. But he says, those branches that bear fruit, he's going to prune so that they can be even more fruitful. Even more fruitful to do what? To glorify God. But those branches that don't bear fruit, well, they're not really good for anything except to be gathered up and thrown away, okay? That sounds a little bit intense, I know some people are like, oh, I don't like that message. It's okay. Abide and bear fruit. It's okay. Okay. They're only good to be gathered up and thrown away. So Jesus then gives us some pretty cool insight into the how to abide. Okay. He starts talking about the love that God has shown him. God loved Jesus and therefore Jesus loves us. Okay, it's a trickle-down nourishment effect. So Jesus loves us in the way that the Father loves us. This is how we abide. We abide in his love. Because if we recognize how much God loves us, keeping God's commandments becomes a little bit easier. But first, we have to recognize how much God loves us, what God has done for us. And if we do this, he says his joy will become complete in us. Our joy will become complete. His joy will be in us. That's, that's pretty good news this Sunday morning. Amen. Now, here's the thing. Jesus gives us a pretty clear mandate at this point. He says, now, God's loved me. I've loved you. Now go do what I do and love like I've loved. Now, not just any love, sacrificial love. That kind of love that lays down its life for one another. That's scary. Like Malcolm said, that's kind of hard, right? Now, he gives us this insight, and he gives us this pretty cool layout. Like, there's a reason that we're getting this insider information now. This is insider information of how this all really works, and how the Father loved him, he loves us, and this meant to be trickled down, that we can glorify the Father with our actions, that we, of all people, we can glorify God. He says, you're given this information because you're friends to me. You're no longer slaves, you're no longer servants, you're friends to me. Talk about good news. Y'all, we have gone from our joy can be complete, we get a reconciled relationship with God, and we're friends to Jesus. Whoo, I'm done. Right, that's all the good news we really need. We get, we get to do that. That's abundant life. That's real life, okay? But we have a choice in that life. Now, I know I sped through that. I want to give you guys a couple of key points to kind of cling to that will help frame up the rest of this message today for you, okay? First point, we are the branches. Our job is to abide. That's our, that's our job. Abide in the vine, which is Jesus. And abiding is keeping his commandments. Step one. That's our job, okay? Number two, bearing fruit is the byproduct of abiding. Now, I don't want you guys to get this mixed up. Bearing fruit is a byproduct of our job. Bearing fruit is loving one another, but we don't get to love other people until we first have been loved. We can't, we can't pour out, I've heard it said, we can't pour out unless we're being filled up, right? 
So unless God is filling us on the vine, it's that trickle-down effect that I'm talking about. Unless we're getting filled up, we're no good. There will be no fruit. Bearing fruit is the byproduct of abiding. It's not our main job. Okay? Think of it like this. Uh, 1 John 4:19 uh, through 21. It's not going to be on the screen. I'll sum it up. It is in the app notes for you. Basically, it's like this. We love because Jesus first loved us. And whoever claims to love God loves like God. Well, that's hard teaching. <laughs> Whoever claims to love God loves like God. Whoever claims to love him loves like him. If they love like God, then they will glorify God in their actions. But if they don't love like God, they don't love the Father. I know that's that's pretty intense. If you don't love like God, you don't love God. Now, when we abide in Jesus and we are keeping those commandments, we will grow fruit. His word is very clear. It says we will, in fact, grow fruit if we abide in his love. Fruit comes from following God's commandments. But the only way that that's going to work, the only way that that's going to work is if we have that trickle-down effect, okay? Now, number three, bearing fruit, and I've said this before, bearing fruit is glorifying to God. Glorifying God means that you're a true disciple. If you're glorifying God, Joel did this whole like reverse engineering a couple of weeks ago. If you're glorifying God, you're a true disciple. What does a true disciple get? Eternal life. But men and women, do you see how this is literally, it all starts with abiding. If you don't abide, none of this happens. Do you see how that works? It's... Ultimately, I know this is kind of an oversimplification, but you have one job. That's it. You got one job. Okay. Now, with that, we're going to jump into today's passage, but I wanted to give you that kind of framework because Jesus is going to wrap this up by kind of telling us that we've been chosen and we've been appointed, and that's important. So first, I'm going to read John 15, 16 to you guys. It's on the board. It's on the screen. on the board. Like I'm a school teacher. It's on the board. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give to you. Y'all, you've been chosen and appointed to do what? If you're keeping up, to do what? Go bear fruit. You've been chosen and appointed to go bear fruit. Now, you guys might be like, wait, Tony, you said I have one job, and that's to abide. It seems like bearing fruit is the main job. No, no, stop. Go back to verse four and five. In verse four, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, again, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you could do nothing. So no abiding, no fruit for you. (laughs) You can't bear fruit unless you abide, unless you are hitched to Jesus, you're done. You can't love like Jesus if you don't receive Jesus' love. That seems kind of commonsensical, but... So we've been chosen and we've been appointed. Now, I want to make something clear to you. We have free will. So just because we've been chosen, okay, I know today's message is called The Choice is Ours. And this might seem like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. You've been chosen, but the choice is ours. Well, here's how this works, okay? I'm married. For those of you that don't know my story, I chose my wife. Not out of a catalog, but I chose... (laughs) I chose my wife. I said, I said, she's the one. I know it. I love her. I want to show her that I love her. And I asked her to marry me three months in. Yeah. You know what? She looked at me just as crazy as y'all are looking at me too. Like, are you insane? I don't even know you. But here's the truth. Three months in, I asked. Guess what? You know what happened? She said no. Can you believe that? 
I asked this woman to be my wife and she said no. Can you imagine? What was she thinking? <laughs> now, clearly she came to her senses later on because <laughs> I got a ring on it. <laughs> but, but here's the truth. We have free will. God's like, I chose you. I want you. And you can be like, are you crazy? I don't even know you. It happens all the time. Just like Jen, we have free choice, a choice to accept or decline this appointment. Now, this is not like a doctor's appointment where you can call and cancel. That's not what I'm talking about. This is like an appointment. The way this means in like common vernacular would be more like you've been appointed to be a Supreme Court judge. It's that kind of an appointment, okay? Now, it doesn't mean that you're a Supreme Court judge. Don't try to go make laws, but it means you have been appointed with a very important task here, okay? Now, what's cool about this is we've been chosen and appointed to glorify God. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I have a little bit of low self-esteem. Just a little. Those of you that know me are like, <clears throat> but no, I have a little bit of low self-esteem. And here's the reality of that sentence. I'm not worthy to glorify God. This is God. I'm me. What can I do? But Jesus is saying, I chose you. I appointed you. But the choice is up to you. It's the choice is ours, right? This is a big deal, guys. This is a big deal because Jesus is, is almost like pleading with us at this point. He's like, I have an abundant life for you planned out. I've got so much good for you. I've got a reconciled life to the Father all for you. You get to be plugged back in to the vine just for you. I'm going to pour my love through you and you're going to love other people. <laughs> and in that love, you're going to bring people to the Father. You're going to glorify God. That's a big deal. This is an abundant life. This is not like a new car. No, that's, a, that's, that's material garbage. That stuff doesn't last. That stuff fades. It breaks. It gets old. It falls apart, right? It's material. This is not that. This is something that'll last. It says fruit that will last. See, it's lasting because it shines light and glory on the God that is everlasting. And Jesus chose you for that role. You've been appointed to that spot. That's a big assignment. But wait, there's more. Look at the back half of 16. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Now, because of this appointing, you get to go to the Father and ask whatever you need in the name of Jesus. It's like Jesus gave you his son card to use on his dad. He's like, here, just ask him. He'll say yes to you because you're me, basically, in this. Now, again, this is not that same kind of like a new car. God, you guys with this new car thing. It's not that. Okay, this is, this is something different. You guys get to ask anything that you want of God, and he will give it to you as it pertains to Loving others like he loves us. So things that will help you to love like Jesus. That's what he's talking about right now, okay? So that you can complete the task of loving like him. So things like patience. Yeah, we need that. <laughs> Especially people that love me. But patience. We need patience, we need perseverance, we need kindness, we need gentleness, we need those things. This is the kind of thing that you can go to. And, and he's asking us, he's telling us like, look, I'm giving you this assignment, I'm giving you this appointing, but don't worry, I'm gonna equip you. You get to go to the Father and ask for anything you need to complete this task. You're not just going in with just you. That's good news, because if I went in with just me, I'd fail. 
Because let's be real, y'all. If, if I was God, I'd have been done with all of you. <laughs> and me. <laughs> like, for real. We're not loving like us. We're loving like God. And because of that, Jesus says, hey, we can go to the Father and ask for that. So that we can obey this command. Verse 17, this is my command, love each other. Seems simple enough. Love each other. Yeah, I can do that. See, we have a mission, abide in Jesus. Why? So that we can bear fruit and love like him. So why? So that we can glorify God. Remember a few weeks back, I, uh, I referenced in the first week, John, uh, 1 John 2, 5 and 6, where I said, we know that we're in him. We know we're abiding when we live like him. Well, I got news flash for y'all. We live like him. If we live like him, then we're going to love like him. And if we love like him, then we're going to bear fruit like him. And if we bear fruit like him, we will glorify God like him. I'll even take that a step further. If we glorify God like him, then our love will be contagious like his was. Is your love contagious? If our love is contagious, we will make disciples, true disciples. We already established true disciples will also glorify God. And the cycle continues. See, ultimately, as disciples, we are like candles in the dark. We are glory shiners. Our appointed position is glory shiner. That's pretty cool. Each one of us is meant to shine the light toward God and spread it to another candle so that we can shine more and more and more and more and more and more and more light on the Father so that everybody will know him. Everybody will see him. That's the role. Starts with abiding. But loving like Jesus, guys, the reason this is so important is loving like Jesus brings the world to the Father. And you've been appointed that task. Kind of cool. But the choice is ours. It's if we choose to abide. Now, I was convicted looking at this. I'm not going to lie. We talked a couple of weeks back about taking a gardener's eye view. You guys remember that? Gardener's eye view. And I did a little fruit check. I would implore you guys to check your fruit. Any gardener will tell you, check your fruit. Make sure there's nothing eaten at it or anything like that. I check your fruit. We have gophers. Evil little critters. But anyway, <clears throat> check your fruit. Look at how you love. Look at how you love. Ask yourself, is that love pointing people back to God? Is that love pointing people to God? Because if it's not, there's a really good chance it's pointing back at you. Like, take a closer look at how we love. This is important. Am I loving so that people will think I'm awesome? Is that why? Am I loving to get something in return? Am I loving, am I even loving well? Am I taking time to be compassionate? Am I being an active listener? Am I, am I speaking truth to people? Am I holding people accountable? Am I, am I praying for people? Am I actually praying for people? Not just, hey, I'll pray for you. No, but like hitting your knees and praying for those people. You want to know who does this well? Nancy Navarro, that lady, man, whew, I want to be like Nancy when I grow up. That lady prays for people and Hey, am I generous with my time and my resources? Haiti bags, anyone? Now, I'm not saying that to shame y'all because look, I'm pointing at me, okay? Pointing at me. This was my conviction. I was like, oh, is my fruit pointing back to God? I want this to reframe how we look at this because our love has a purpose. Our love is, is purposeful because we were loved on purpose. So I'm not saying this to shame. Like I said, it's just kind of like how Joel said last week. 
It's time. It's time to lean in and get serious about our relationship with God. And frankly, it's it's time to grow up. It's time to mature and love each other the way that God loves us. And it all starts with our choice to abide. See, it seems like an easy choice. I think if hard-pressed, everybody in this room would be like, yeah, I, I want the abundant life. I want my joy to be complete. I want to honor God. I want, to, I want that. Who would not want that? I don't think there's anybody on the planet that's like, nah. Nah, I don't want abundant life. I don't want my joy to be complete. That's pfft. Nobody would say that. That person would be clinically insane. They'd be locked up. It seems like it's a no-brainer. Nobody's like, yeah, I want to be dried up and thrown away. That's totally my goal. But the truth is, it's not as much of a no-brainer as you might think. Malcolm did an excellent job this morning um, just showing us what it looks like to be in the grip of God. The truth is, Scripture is full of people who just decided to not. They decided to not. There were folks that said, hey, yeah, Jesus, I want to follow you. They went to him. They were face to face with Jesus Christ, and they were like, I want to follow you. There were even some folks that followed Jesus for a minute. But there was always a point that Jesus got with these people where it was too far for them to go. And whether that was sell everything you own, give it to the poor and come follow me, or eat my flesh and drink my blood, they bailed. They bailed. They chose to not abide. They chose to not stay with Jesus in that. They're like, no, I can't can't get with you in that. You ask too much. I've been there. Leads us to the point. Y'all, abiding is hard. I do not want to sugarcoat this for you. Keeping God's commandments is hard. Loving like Jesus is hard, but you know what's even harder? Trying to love people without being loved first, because that's impossible. (laughs) If we're doing it on our own strength, we're dead in the water. Our resources will dry up, we will dry out, and we will fall off. Jesus is trying to put it really plain for us. The only way to this, the only way to reconnect, the only way to fulfill my command is to abide. That's it. He does give us that choice. And I think that choice, honestly, I think it messes with people. Consequences mess with people. Like, I was thinking about this the other day. I, I went into Pete's, and I got, I got coffee for, for my wife and I, and, uh, and I'm always stuck at Pete's because I don't know what to order. And I'm looking at the menu, and I'm like, ugh. And this little old lady behind the counter with pink hair, her name's Carol. She's amazing. She's hilarious. She's always super patient no matter what. She's like, whatever. It's your turn in line. I'm your audience. Take as long as you need. I don't care about the people behind you. You're it for me. And I was like... <laughs> I love you, Carol. But here's the thing. I'm panicked. And this is for like a $4 latte. Imagine if you went into like Pete's or Starbucks or someplace like that, and you're like, uh, I'm going to take a a caramel latte. And they're like, "Eh, wrong answer. You're dead. We would freak out. We'd never order coffee again. If we had the opportunity to get that choice wrong, we'd be like, "Mm -mm. what do you want? I don't know. I think that's where we are a lot of the time. We freak out. Even as Christians, y'all, I want to be real for you for a minute. I think Christians have grown fearful of the truth that our choices have consequences. (laughs) So I'm speaking to y'all in the room. I'm not just speaking to the unbelievers here. I'm speaking to the folks who have hitched their wagon to Jesus and saying, hey, I'm in. Really? (laughs) Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Really? Sell everything you own. (laughs) Give it to the poor and come follow me. Like these are these are the one things for those people in scripture. Okay, this is not me trying to pick on y'all. Like you guys sell everything you own, give it to the poor. 
I'm poor. No, don't. <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it's not what I mean, okay? I'm saying everybody's got that button. And I need you guys to look at that button in your life and go, is there something that would ever get in the way of me saying yes to abiding in Jesus? And if there is, you need to cut that sucker out of your life. I cannot say that more bluntly than that. Probably going to get yelled at for being like, cut that sucker, really? You couldn't have come up with a better phrase. But the truth is, get it out. (laughs) This is how much of a problem I think we actually have here when it comes to consequences. I think everybody here uh, understands every choice we have has a consequence. It's pretty basic, right? From the littlest kid to the oldest kid, we all know what consequences mean, right? But I think everybody has this this visceral reaction that it's negative. I want to try and reframe consequences for you guys. I'm going to do a little free will exercise. Okay, ready? I got 10 bucks. Come get it. Who wants it? (laughs) Great. You know what's hilarious about that? There are some in this room that were like, I want it, but did nothing about it. Some of y'all didn't even move. I don't know if that was like, I don't want to take the pastor's money. He just said he was poor. I I don't know what that was, but maybe Charlie's like, I'll take it. I'm poor too. No, but I'm with you, brother, but it's okay. But here's the funny thing. What's shocking is some of you guys didn't even move. I have youth who have seen similar exercises. They know I like to give things away. They didn't even move. They were like, nope. Mm -mm." Maybe it was because they were fearful, right? Maybe it was like, well, he just said he was going to reframe consequences. He's going to do something weird to me. I'm not, um, I'm going to stay right here. Maybe you guys just didn't value that $10 enough to do that long walk all the way up here. For whatever the reason. (laughs) Whatever the reason was, though, guys, the consequence of our free will, I want you guys to hear this. I know it's all fun and games, but the consequence of our free will is that your choice determines your outcome. I'm going to say that again. The consequence of your free will is that your choice determines your outcome. That's the ultimate bare bones, trickled down, like the most common denominator consequence to free will. Your choice determines your outcome. Everything beyond that is just outcome. But it's not inherently bad. See, people think consequence is inherently bad. Somebody still got the prize. (laughs) So it can't be bad. Charlie's a somebody. Somebody still got the prize. Anywhere there's a choice, there's a consequence. God loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. But y'all, he will not force us to love him back. That's up to you. Jesus is literally beckoning us. He's given us the outline. He's laid it all out for us. Abide in me. I want to fulfill you, bring you back to reconcile relationship with the Father, back to being dependent on God, the way you were designed to be, I'm going to restore you. He's saying he wants to do that. Abide in me. But y'all, he won't force you to stay on the vine. We have a choice. And there is a consequence. It's not mean. This is actually loving you enough to tell you straight. Jesus loves us enough to keep it real. (laughs) I respect people who don't beat around the bush and sugarcoat things. I don't know about you guys. Like, I don't want somebody to come give me good news, bad news, or anything else and take 20 minutes to get there. Just give me the news. Okay? Now, here's the thing. I'm going to give this as matter of fact as it can be. I'm going to use a movie. Now, here's the deal. Don't judge me. (laughs) It's a rated R movie. Kids, I don't recommend this movie. But no, in the movie Shawshank Redemption... See, some people know. It's Morgan Freeman. Come on, y'all. Like, okay, so Morgan Freeman's character, Red, and, and, and Tim Robbins' character, Andy, are in prison, okay? They're locked up. And Tim Robbins' character goes to him and goes, I guess it all just kind of comes down to this. Do I want to get busy living or get busy dying? 
Now, I don't say it to be dramatic, okay? I'm not up here trying to, trying to be drama. But get busy living and get busy dying, I love that line. That's one of the most powerful lines in Hollywood. I don't care what anybody says. You will never sell me otherwise. I don't care how many people throw $10 bills at me. But, but the truth of the matter is, get busy living or get busy dying. <laughs> You know a teenager is going to steal that, right? <clears throat> See? <laughs> Called it. That was like a permissive moment. <clears throat> but guys, this is not a threat-filled thing, okay? This is not a threat-filled message. Get your money. Everybody get your money. <clears throat> I earned that. That's my fault. But back to the message, okay? I call this the Shawshank Gospel. Abide in me or don't. Guys, abide in me or don't. There's no third option. We are either going to get busy living or get busy dying. Jesus outlines it pretty clear. Those that abide in me and I in you will bear much fruit. The Father will prune them. They will come alongside them. You will have an intimate relationship with God and you will grow fruit. If you don't, you will dry up and wither up and be cut off and thrown away. Man, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple stuff. He wants us to abide. He is pleading with us. Choose, oh, choose life. This is a loving message, y'all. <laughs> I know our culture has got this in our head that anything that says consequences must be a turn or burn kind of message. That's not what this message is. This message is there's a good way. There is a right way. There is a proper way that you were designed. You were made to be this way. This is how you were built to be. You were built to be abiding in the Father. You were built to be plugged into the vine. You were built to bear fruit, to be image bearers of God, to actually glorify Him. This is that. It would be like I gave you a television set and try to tell you, here it is, but I don't give you any power cords and I don't give you a remote control. A lot of good that does. Jesus is like, here is everything you need. This is the television. This is the remote. This is your cables. This is the manual to how to use it. This is how you get shows to watch. He's breaking it down for us. It would be really dumb of us to get mad at him for outlining how to use the thing that he's given us. Right or wrong? Thank you. I need that validation sometimes. But... But we get into this trap and we're like, no, can't tell me what to do. Can't tell me I have consequences. What kind of loving God would dare to give me a choice? What? The kind of loving God that wants you to be with him so bad that he sent his son to die for you. The kind of loving God that actually said, okay, right now in this moment, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you what the dad did. I'm going to show you what I did. And I'm going to show you what you should do so that you can glorify the dad that did it. And everything in your life is going to pour out of that place because that's how you were designed to live. You want to live an abundant life, then do it the way that you were built to do it. Stop trying to live a life that you weren't meant to live. Guys, you have been appointed specifically, commissioned, appointed to be lovers like Jesus of your neighbors. There is nobody on this planet that can do that job but you. Nobody. Betty, you live in a park. Your next door neighbor, that's your job. The person across the street from you, that's your job. You have a mission field. Right? These two beautiful women next to you, that is your mission field. The people that you come in contact with, that is your mission field. We've been appointed and we get to, this is a privilege, y'all, this is a get to live this out. But the choice is ours and it is a life and death choice. I'm sorry to say it. But man, that you would choose life. Now, I would be remiss 
meaning I would be regretful if I didn't address the elephant in the room. Some of y'all have never made a true decision to follow Jesus. For whatever reason, maybe you've made a decision to follow him as your friend. Or you've made a decision to follow him because he's the savior from hell. But you have not subscribed to the theory of him as Lord. Lord means you have agreed to be pruned. Lord means that you agreed to get your sustenance from the Father. See, Lord means that everything you do, your steps, your life, your way that you live your life, all of that is dictated by the Lord. Now, if that's you, and you've never made that decision, I'd like to invite you to do that today. Don't worry, I'm not gonna embarrass y'all. I'm not gonna have you stand up. I'm not gonna make you come to the front. I'm not gonna make you raise your hand or do anything weird. This is between you and God right now, okay? But we have been called specifically to receive this. Now, some of you guys in this room I don't say guys, some of y'all, some of the guys and girls, guys and gals, as Joel would say. <laughs> Maybe some of you guys have made a choice to follow, but like some of those other people, you reached your point of maybe, maybe it got hard. And for whatever reason, you just stopped. You stepped away. You chose to not. I don't know. That's your story. But I'm going to actually, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to repent of that choice. See, in repenting, we get to ask Jesus to regraft us into the vine. It's not too late. Your story is not over. There's breath in your lungs. So I'm going to, I'm going to pray here in a minute. And I'd like, if you are in either of those two groups, that you would join me in that when you bow your head. But first... For the Christ followers in this room, for those of you that have made a decision to have Jesus as both Lord and Savior of your life, I need y'all to pray for your brothers and sisters to your right and your left. I need you to pray that any wall that would come against them would fall down, that they would actually heed the call, and that if there's conviction stirring, that the Holy Spirit would finish its work and just stir that person so much that they hit their knees that they need to know Jesus. Okay? So everybody's got a part to play today in prayer. Go ahead and Bow your head. God, thank you for the opportunity to be loved by you. Thank you for the opportunity to, to have everything reframed and put in a place that we can say, yeah, this is how it was meant to be. I'm meant to be yours completely. So if it is you that needs to choose Jesus today, and this is your first time doing so, I want you to just say, in your head, pray along with me. Jesus, I choose you. I choose you to number my steps, to know my heart, to teach me to love, to use me in any way that you see fit. I give my life completely to you. Forgive me for all my missteps and the things that I have chosen not to do in you. I see the error in my ways, and I choose you. Would you come into my life? Would you come into my life and be Lord over my life? Would you come into my life and save me from myself? And would you fill me with that joy that you promised? Now, for those that have maybe stepped away, I should pray, Jesus, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me because I have, I have actively chosen to not. And it may not have seemed like I actively chose to not at the time, but... I actively chose to not. Because when things got hard or when things got scary, I went the other way. So God, would you forgive me? Would you help me back into the vine? Would you regraft me into the vine? Because you are the only person that can do that, Jesus. So would you plug me back into where I'm supposed to be? And would you welcome me back home? Lord, I, I want to give you my life as Lord. 
and say yes to you. Your ways are better than mine. I see that now. God, I thank you for the men and women that have made choices today. I don't know who they are, but you do. I praise you that your gospel is not painlessness. Your gospel is freedom. So God, would you give every man and woman in this room who is a follower of Jesus the strength that it takes to abide in you, to fulfill your commands. God, would you give us the ability and the strength to shine light on you and nowhere else, that if there's any light that comes from us, that it would point directly at you, that the world would see that you are good, that you are loving, that you are glory-filled, and that you are the only God worth serving. God, we praise you for that. We praise you that you are the only God worth serving. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people. Would you be glorified as we try to walk like you? And because we can ask all things in the name of Jesus, we pray these things in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So y'all, here's the thing. I told you I wasn't going to embarrass you. I'm not going to. But I do have a favor to ask. If any of you actually did make a decision in either way today, there are pastors in this room. There's Pastor Corey. There's Pastor Joel. There's me. You, some of y'all might know Pastor Ernie. But today, I would like for you guys to go up to a pastor and just have a brief conversation. And I know we got a business meeting after here. But just real quick, just to let them know that you made a choice today. Because y'all, this isn't because we want to take roll and hit the tick marks. We want to celebrate with you because what you guys might not know is anybody that made that choice, whether the first choice or a come back home choice, there's a party in heaven today for you. (laughs) 